Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crowley. I'm back with another How to Draw video. You know, I've done a lot of videos over the years that use a highly realistic uh, drawing style, but I haven't done so many using stylized uh, techniques. And today I'm going to be showing five different ways to draw trees, but not drawing realistically. Uh, instead drawing more, you know, imaginatively in a sort of a stylized way. And I'm going to just go ahead and roughly put in the um, five different areas where these trees are going to go. And I suppose what I ought to do is begin by zooming in on this first one. Okay, so one of the challenges with drawing trees is that they are highly, highly complex uh, structures. Anyone of uh, you who have ever tried to sit down and draw a tree, um, you know, from life, looking at an actual tree, it can be almost overwhelming the amount of detail and, um, you know, complexity. So people, uh, illustrators who are drawing trees, especially if they have to draw, draw a bunch of them in sort of like the background of, say, a, a children's book or something like that, they start to come up with strategies of simplifying things. And what I'm doing uh, to begin with is uh, drawing a sort of typical cloud-like um, shape for the contour of the leaves of the tree. But what I'm going to do at the bottom is sort of make it a little curved, a little opening like so. Um, I'm not going to make you know a straight line like that. We're going to continue with this sort of cloudy shape. But you can see I'm sort of opening up a space here so that underneath it I can draw the trunk and uh, sort of the beginnings of the branches. Now this is not um, based on reality uh, so much. We don't see the uh, the leaves sort of propped up above the trunk of the tree. But um, as I said, illustrators are looking for ways of sort of doing a, almost a symbol of a tree rather than an actual tree. And what I'm going to do is have this trunk way down here start to break into greatly simplified um, branches. And let's say it splits into four, okay? I'm going to have it split into four. And then each one of the um, sort of divided parts of the trunk are going to split into a further two. Now you could have it split more if you want to go more detailed. In fact, everything you see in this video is open to you experimenting and coming up with your own uh, variations on it. But believe it or not, for an illustrator who's um, trying to do, like I said, a children's book or a greeting card, something where it's not meant to be highly realistic, this type of a shape is maybe all you're going to need. Now what I'm going to do real quickly, just to give you a sense of how this becomes a finished illustration, is I'm going to take markers uh, and color in the basics of the leaf area and the trunk area. Um, and then maybe I'll come back and talk a little bit as I add further detail by way of uh, colored pencil. Okay, so I'm just going to come in with a um, darker green, a darker shade of green, and begin adding just a little bit of uh, shading along the bottom. But uh, again, since we're not trying to do a uh, realistic drawing of a tree. Um, the shading, naturally enough, also is not going to be highly realistic. But what I might do after, say, I've got a, a bit of base layer shading underneath this whole uh, basic shape, um, to make it a little more visually interesting, I'm going to add just a few sort of um, crescent shapes as we go up into the tree like so, right? And I'm going to do that all just with a little bit of shading. Um, it's very liberating, I think, to, to get away from realism, especially for someone like me who has, <laughs> you know, I did the realism challenge and I've done these uh, books uh, with highly realistic looking illustrations in them, even the sort of manga style books, usually fairly focused on conveying a sense of reality. Um, I find myself sometimes envying those illustrators who are more playful and um, just, you know, working in a slightly more symbolic way. And uh, sometimes that's really what you need. Uh, if you look at um, greeting cards, as I said, things like that, children's book illustrations, they don't want it to be 
photorealistic most of the time. A lot of times they want something a little more playful. So that shows you my approach for adding shading to uh, the trees. And of course I'm going to finish this up in uh, time lapse, but I thought I'd show what I uh, intend to do with adding a bit of shading to the uh, uh, trunk itself. And it seems to me the darkest area would be up here where the branches meet the leaves. And maybe just a little on the side. Now you could get into adding texture here uh, on the trunk. I'm actually not going to do that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep it simple. Got to force myself to keep it simple and not keep adding uh, loads and loads of detail. So let me go ahead and finish this up in time lapse and then we're going to move on to our uh, tree number two. All right, so I think that's enough of that, and um, <clears throat> believe it or not, this is one of the more realistic <laughs> uh, versions of a you know stylized tree illustration I'm going to do today. This next one is going to be quite abstracted, but uh, beautiful in its own way. Let's go ahead and move on to tree number two. Okay, so you know when people are doing uh, simplified drawings of trees, generally speaking, they they certainly don't want to get into the business of drawing each individual leaf. But believe it or not, that's exactly what I'm going to be doing uh, with this one. And it is sort of a fun way of drawing a tree. Now I'm beginning with this highly stylized kind of curving uh, trunk here. And I'm going to go ahead and um, do sort of roughly um, symmetrical uh, branches. So if there's one over here, I'm going to put a, uh, another one over here, maybe in a slightly different location. Let's have this one come out here. And this one, I think I'll go ahead and have it branch into two. Does that qualify as a pun if I say it branched into two? I'm not sure if it does. Uh, and then I'm going to have uh, a fairly similar one. How about if we have this one branch into three? And the very top part, which really is an extension of the uh, trunk. I'll just have maybe one more come off of here. And this gives us the sort of basic structure of the trunk itself. And believe it or not, what I'm going to be doing with this one is uh, drawing each individual leaf like so. Uh, but what I might do is just go straight in with the marker rather than draw it uh, in pencil. So let's begin. I'm going to take a um, nice dark brown marker and uh, we'll get the basics of the tree trunk itself in place. And now, yeah, like I said, I'm going to just grab a um, marker and start going in these first few, of course, are, you know, following the pencil lines that I put in there to begin with. But very quickly, we're going to get to the stage of drawing individual leaves just straight onto the paper without having used uh, the pencil to guide me. And I think that's one of the sort of fun and, again, like I said, uh, liberating uh, feelings about doing an illustration of this sort. It really is, these are symbols of leaves, as you can see, they're not even connected uh, to the branch from which they arise. They're sort of floating uh, in air. And this is, you know, this is just a basic idea of how you could uh, illustrate a tree using this approach. You could make it far more detailed than this. Um, with many more branches and tinier trees. Um, you know, you probably want to draw at a larger scale than what I've done here. But I think you can already see there's a fun sort of decorative uh, effect when you begin drawing a tree in this way with these sort of magically floating leaves. You do have to, I think, pay attention to what direction the leaves are pointing in. It has to sort of make sense in terms of you imagining them having, you know, sprouted forth from the branch that is supporting them. I don't think you can get away with just tossing them in any direction you please. I suppose you could. Who knows? 
but I'm going to go ahead and finish this part of it, uh, part up with time lapse, and I might just go straight into adding a little bit of shading with the colored pencil, so that we go all the way through uh, to the end. But I can come back and sort of give some pointers about uh, some of the shading and, and other stuff that I decided to do. Alright, well hopefully it is showing up here that I've taken selected leaves and um, added a different shade of green to them as a way of um, bringing a little variety uh, to this illustration. This one really is a highly decorative um, way of drawing a tree and I can imagine, you know, someone painting this on a wall, say, you know, in a, in a restaurant or something. Uh, it could be part of a logo almost, you know. Um, there's something about these simplified, slightly abstracted forms that become uh, more memorable, really, than a highly realistic illustration. Well, let's move on to this third one, and this is going to be the most fanciful uh, of them all. All right, well, this one's going to be fun um, because it really does get into the realm of uh, a, a real symbol of a tree rather than an actual drawing of a tree. And what I'm going to do is begin by drawing this quite simplistic uh, shape that um, becomes an almost unbelievably smooth contour. Uh, and in a way you could think of this approach as the sort of um, cutaway version of a tree in which you sort of magically see every branch. You know, it's almost as if you sliced the tree in half and are able to see uh, through all the leaves. I've always admired this type of illustration and uh, sometimes wish that I could do a whole book in this highly um, stylized way. It certainly would be a big change from what I have done in the past. Um, I find myself looking at illustrations by other artists who work in styles such as this, and I become a little envious. I'm like, oh boy, it must be so freeing to be able to work in a, this uh, more decorative way, this way that is less concerned with uh, constantly checking reference and so forth, to make, so forth to make sure that you're getting the details right. So who knows? Watch this space. Maybe someday I will do an illustration that is as abstracted as this. Now I think, I hope you could see the way that I did this. I started by drawing just the basic um, trunk. I uh, decided to do one, two, three, four basic offshoots and then a few um, offshoots from there of smaller branches and I figured at that point, you know what, I think that's enough. Um, let me go ahead and color in the basics of this. Um, with a marker and then maybe I can come back and talk just a little more about it as I begin to add some shading. So there you go, you've seen this kind of thing before and it has a kind of mid-century 1950s, maybe early 1960s look to me. Again, highly decorative. One thing I'm going to do on this that I haven't done in the uh, other two so far and won't probably do in any of the remaining ones is to uh, add just a little pattern here. This is not really drawings of leaves. It really is almost like a textile pattern in a way. Um, just to finish things off, sort of, again, making it a little more decorative. Um, I think you could get away with there being no further detail in this at all, but I just wanted to show as a kind of an option that you could apply to a variety of things. You know, you could do this also over here uh, if you wanted to. Um, that's the fun of this style of illustration. You can experiment. You can find your own way of drawing trees, and you know, I've limited myself to uh, five different uh, versions, but I'm sure you could do 20, 30, 50 different versions of stylized trees if you wanted to. Um, so let me go ahead and finish this up, the sort of uh, shading area. You will see me adding a bit of shading all the way around the edge of this contour, um, and probably a, a bit as well to the trunk of the tree. And then we're going to move on to the fourth, which is going to be quite different because it's going to be a uh, pine tree.
All right, so there you go. It's surprising how good a illustration like this can look, even when it is, you know, only just a <laughs> vague, distant relative of an actual tree. Uh, I love that you can see all the individual branches. It sort of seems like something that a child um, would think of when they imagine a tree, seeing, you know, thinking through the whole structure and so forth. Let's move on now to my drawing of a pine tree. Okay, so speaking of children, this one is maybe going to be the most uh, childlike in appearance. And I am, I am going to start with that classic kind of triangular uh, shape, but really this is just a guideline for what I want to do, uh, which is going to be sort of um, almost like a pagoda in a way. Use this as a, a way of creating a shape. and. I saw some illustrations uh, online as I was trying to get inspiration for this, and one of the things that I thought was interesting about the way some people draw pine trees is that they they stop worrying so much about you know where is the trunk, uh, and they it's more like they just start having fun with this contour because you see how these lines are cutting in so close to the center, it's uh, kind of unbelievable, isn't it, in terms of like, where is the trunk? You're making it so, <laughs> you're having all of these points come in so close, it's almost as if there is no uh, trunk to this tree. Um, and again, to me, that is where we get into the realm of stylization, of not worrying so much about the kind of anatomy of a real tree. Um, and it becomes more decorative. Um, now, I'm clearly going to have to erase a lot of these guidelines, but I'll do that in time-lapse, and I think I'll go straight in with marker. I'm going to show you one last little bit of um, detail, if you can call it detail, that I'm going to add to this as a uh, finishing touch. All right, now, believe it or not, you could probably get away with uh, just um, this plain version of it. I'm cleaning it up a little right now with a kneaded eraser. Highly recommend it if you don't have one. Um, and uh, what I want to do though as a finishing touch is to add just a few uh, curving lines just below each one of the sort of uh, stages of the pagoda. Uh, I'll add just a little bit to the tip up here, but um, I think it, it can make it a little more visually interesting if we have um, a few lines here. I don't know if it's really, you know, is it supposed to suggest branches or texture? I don't know if it does really. I think it's more just a, a decorative thing like all of these trees. Uh, certainly the last two have been highly decorative and not concerned with uh, reality. So you can see me adding just a few final touches here. I'll go ahead and finish this off in time lapse and then we're going to move on to the last one which is going to get us a little bit back towards reality. Um, it's going to have a little more of the the actual structure of a real tree to it uh, as our fifth and final uh, stylized tree. All right, so as promised, this last one is going to have um, a fair amount of structure to it. I'm going to create what uh, could, I think, be described as a kind of bonsai tree, <laughs> as a, have a, giving it a little bit of um, Asian influence, this one. And I'm beginning by drawing a, a trunk that really curves quite a bit from one side to the other, as you sometimes see in a bonsai, or bonsai, I believe it would be pronounced in uh, actual Japanese. And what I want to do here is to think a lot about the um, individual branches and how each one of them can be uh, supporting its own little tuft of leaves. So let's begin down here. And I'm going to, each one of these branches, the way I draw them, they're going to kind of curve upwards and maybe have like one or two supporting branches so that I can put on top of it a sort of cloud shape, as we said in that first one, uh, version of leaves. Let me go, I'm going to curve this down just a little bit more, just as a kind of stylistic choice. Let's have it curved down. And I will be balancing that out with other um, 
of these little groups of leaves. Let me go, I'm going to have one that cuts in front of the uh, trunk. Go ahead and erase that away so you can see this, this area of green is going to actually pop out in front of the trunk. And then we can get um, another branch out like so. Again, always curving upwards in my design. And uh, just as this one curved down in this direction, I'd like this one to curve down in the opposite direction. Get that branch connecting up there. And you can see it's already starting to take on that bonsai look. Bonsai. I get confused. Which pronunciation should I use? Um, and um, you can be quite free. You can see I'm not really worrying too much about what these individual shapes look like. I'm just uh, tossing them in as, uh, as I go. But yeah, that you can see there's this sort of rainbow-like curving uh, pattern that happens with each one of these individual bits. And I suppose the top can also go along with that. That This looks like it needs at least one uh, or more supporting branches, though, to finish that off. I wonder if there's space. I wonder if I can get away with one last little tiny one down here. What do you think, people? Can I get away with it? Let's try! Um, just a, a sort of a mini one. Just a sort of thing. You know, it's a lot of things when you're drawing trees, you're looking for a, a certain type of balance. Not exact symmetry, but one side balancing the other. As you see in nature, generally speaking. And that gives you the kind of uh, basic structure that I'm going to be doing. I'm going to pull out the markers and uh, do a base layer uh, to show you how I would color these in, and then I'll come back and maybe talk a bit more as I add further detail. All right, so you see the basic uh, structure there and the colors that uh, I, I used. Really, all of these end up with a, a kind of a two-color pattern. I was thinking as I began work on this, what, what if it was autumn? You know, if I was doing autumn leaves, what would that look like? And, uh, well, I'll save that for a future video. But I'm just going to add a little bit of, again, almost symbolic shading, uh, gradient shading, uh, to each one of these tufts of uh, leaves. And uh, as you can see, you could have a lot of fun sort of designing uh, a tree like this. This has almost a, a bit of a Dr. Seuss kind of a feel to it. And uh, heaven knows, he had his own distinct way of drawing trees quite unique. And uh, let's go ahead and finish up with the shading, and then we can maybe uh, do a comparison of all five of the different trees. All right, well, there you see my uh, sort of Eastern-influenced final uh, tree. Maybe it doesn't look exactly like a bonsai, but it has a bit of that uh, flavor to it. Let's go ahead and refocus so we can compare all five stylized trees. All right, well, there you see all five trees side by side. It's sort of interesting. I wonder if uh, you would agree with me that out of all of these trees, this one over here... Uh, probably looks the closest to an actual tree, but I would say it's the least interesting visually uh, of these five different designs. As you get further away from what real trees look like, the more fun and maybe memorable uh, the design becomes. But uh, let me know what you thought of this video. I'd love to do more videos in this kind of uh, stylized way. It, it is a, a bit of a departure. Uh, for me. But let's go ahead and end the video by thanking anyone who has supported me by getting any of my books like My Last Summer with Cass. That's my newest uh, graphic novel. Super appreciative to anyone who supports me getting that or The Drawing Lesson, a graphic novel that teaches you how to draw. And, of course, the Mastering Manga series, Mastering Manga 1, 2, and 3. Always super, super grateful to anyone who chooses to support me by getting any of those books. But let's go ahead and lay down this pencil. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I'll be back with another one real soon.